lot of things I was worried about beforehand that are just nothing to worry about. Right at the first it was pretty hard and it was kind of hard to accept that I couldn't just feed her like anybody else or she couldn't drink water like anyone else or something but after a while it just became normal and we're used to it and it's just like feeding any of my other children. He goes to school, he has lunch at school, he comes home from school, has snacks after school, and he plays sports, he rides his bike, he rides his ripstick, his, um, he has a dirt bike that he loves to ride, he uh, wakeboards, he snowboards, he does everything, so it really does not limit him at all. We go swimming as a family and she has even been able to <laughs> go play in the lake and do things that any other kid can do. She can ride a bike outside or ride a little scooter outside. She jumps on the tramp. She does everything that all my other kids do and she can keep up with them. And when he was younger, we used to say he was like Iron Man. So he, it doesn't really affect him at all. He's a very active kid. Do you think it holds you back at all having a feeding tube? No, not at all. There's a few different kinds of tubes. There's the G-tube, the GJ tube, and the PEG. We have the G-tube. We went from an NG tube to the G tube. They explained to us that there were two different ways to go about getting the tube. Um, they could either do a laparoscopic surgery and place the actual button, it's a gastric button, um, into her stomach surgically, or they could do it a different way where they go in endoscopically, and it's, it's called a PEG, or you may hear them say a PEG placement. And we decided to go the surgical route. It didn't take very long, it was a relatively short surgery, it only took maybe half an hour and we stayed in the hospital for about, a, it was one day and one night and then we were able to go home the next day. It was a relatively easy hospital stay. Managing the supplies for the G-tube is another thing that took me a little while to figure it out. Um, you start your home health company, for us it's Home Health and Hospice through Intermountain Healthcare. They will set you up with everything. They will show you how to use the pump. If you've never used a pump, they'll show you all the different syringes. Now, I know that when I got the first delivery, I sat there staring at five boxes full of stuff, and I thought, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do with all this? And so I took a minute and kind of thought, what do I actually need? So what I ended up doing is, I have a thing that sits on my counter that's just a little three drawer bucket. And in that I put everything that I need for everyday use. So I put the different syringes that I need. I put Q-tips and a few gauzes. I put some of her cleaning supplies like um, a bacitracin tube and other things. I keep some bottles in there because that's how when I'm doing a gravity feed I measure out what I'm going to use with bottles. Um, and then I just put some tapes in there too. It's not very full, but it's full because I keep a lot of the stuff around. But it's anything that I'll need every single day to use with her tube. And then I found another place in my home where I was able to put some drawers in that I put pump bags and all my extra supplies. You're gonna get a lot of extra supplies. So I store those all in another place where it's out of my way, out of my kitchen, out of my living room, not in boxes but in a drawer where it's easily accessible. When it's time to feed her, if we're doing a gravity feed, I start by washing my hands, and then I gather all the things. I get the formula, um, I get a large syringe, a 60 milliliter syringe, or a two ounce syringe, and I get a smaller 12 milliliter syringe out and then I get her extension tube. I start by twisting on the 60 milliliter syringe and then I run it underwater for a minute with the clamp open so that water can run through the extension tube. And then after it's run for a minute, I clamp the tube so that there's maybe five to 10 milliliters of water inside the 60 milliliter syringe and then there's water inside the tube. That way when I hook her up and I unclamp it, 
there's water going into her stomach instead of air. So after I've done that, I shake up her formula and I measure it out in a bottle. I just use a bottle from when she was a baby and bottle fed. And I measure out how many ounces I'm going to give her that feed of formula. And then I either take her to the table or we sit on the couch and read a book or sometimes we just stand in the kitchen. But I hook up her extension tube to her button by just lining up the lines and then you twist it half a turn and it locks in. And then I make sure I'm all ready. I pour the formula into the 60 milliliter syringe so that it's, I have two ounces. Then I unclamp it and then we sit while the formula drips into her stomach and that's it. While we're doing a gravity feed, if I need it to go a little slower or a little faster, I can raise my hand up. I can lift the syringe higher if I need it to go in faster or if I can tell she's gonna need a slower feed that feeding, I just take it a little bit further down by her stomach so that it drips into her stomach a little slower. When we're done, I clamp it and unhook her and then I go wash it out. I rinse water through it and then I take my smaller syringe that I've already gathered and pull back maybe 10 milliliters of water and then I re-hook her up to the tube and flush the whole tube with the water that I've put in the smaller syringe and then we're done. That's a feeding. So, I do my feeding with these simple supplies. Two of, two bottles of formula. One bag. And first, open up the bag. up here, open the hatch for your machine, hook it on, pull it back, get it clipped in, and close it. Next, you need to shake these up, open them, Next, you grab the lid, screw it on. Next, you will take your extension to clip onto your G-tube. Take the top, unscrew this, and then next, turn it on. Wait about 10 seconds. Push prime. And it, it once it gets about to the purple, you stop. Once it is about to the purple, you are going to get your extension to hook on. Take off the top flap thing and just screw it on pretty tight. Just in case there's any leftover water, just put it straight over it. Just keep priming the tiny bit. So you get 
like that. Just kick it over, hook it in, twist it. Once it's there, make sure it's unclamped, and then just push, run. And then it'll do it. Okay, when we need to give medicine, which is very convenient in a feeding tube, especially with yucky tasting medications, what we do is we start with cleaning our hands and then we uh, put the extension onto the button and we flush the extension, flush the, the button, and then we um, clamp the extension closed again then we take the medicine syringe and we put that onto the extension, unclamp the extension, and then gently push the medicine through with the syringe. Then we clamp the extension again, take the syringe off, and then reattach the water-filled syringe and unclamp the extension again and flush it with water. And then clamp it again and take the uh, syringe off and then you we're done giving the medication we can just take the extension off. Giving and receiving medicine through the feeding tube is much easier especially when it tastes yucky like some uh, liquid medications do um, because he doesn't have to taste it for the most part um, and it's quick and painless and uh, very convenient, especially if he's on a medication that he has to get every certain number of hours. He could be asleep and I can give him the medication, which is very convenient. So, and uh, especially when we had to do your uh, glucose tolerance test, the orange liquid that you had to drink, how was that? I didn't have to drink it. Because we put it through your feeding tube? Yeah. Was it good to have that choice? Yeah. <laughs> So it's much easier to take medication through the feeding tube. We're going to check the balloon in his G-tube to make sure that there's the proper amount of water in it. I take the small slip tip syringe and insert it into the G-tube holding down the G-tube while I do it and I pull out to get all the water out of the balloon to make sure that there's the proper amount of water in the balloon. In this case, his balloon is short two ounces, so I go ahead and fill up the syringe to the proper amount and insert it back in. And if you do have the correct amount of water in the balloon, go ahead and push it all the way back in. Once a month when I need to check the water in her balloon, I start by taking two syringes. I fill one with four milliliters of warm water. I know to do four milliliters of warm water because her balloon, her tube says four milliliters on that. I start by inserting the empty syringe and I pull back just to make sure that there's still four milliliters of water. And then I pull it out and replace the water with the clean four milliliters. and that's how we fill the balloon. Before I start, I wash my hands and then I gather my swabs and gauze and a bowl of warm water. I usually grab about two swabs because that gives me enough to really clean once and then clean again but dry it off afterwards. Then I go over to the carpet. She's usually more comfortable laying down where, you know, either other people are playing or where I've just changed a diaper. And we lay down. I make sure my swabs and gauze are wet. I put the gauze around the button just to soften up anything that might be collected there or if there's any uh, granulation tissue or anything crusty and I let that sit for a few seconds while it softens it up then I take it off and I take one cotton swab all the way around the top side and really clean out and then I take it down to the bottom side and really clean out on the bottom and then I put that swab to the side then I grab another swab and finish cleaning make sure I get all the way in and around every side of the tube or of the button 
and then I dry off any extra splashes or anything that's on her skin. All right, you're all good. All done. Okay, so we just finished washing our hands and we have all of our supplies on the bed, which are our cotton tip swabs, our warm water, and some gauze to clean up afterwards. He's going to pick up the cotton swab and put it in the hot water and then wash around the G-tube and the stoma. And once that's fully clean, we grab the gauze and wipe around his G-tube. So we've had his feeding tube come out a couple of times. One of those times was at a theme park in Florida. We were standing in line just about to get on the ride and we were messing around. He was climbing on a railing, right? And he, the next thing I knew, he jumped down and he said, Mom, my feeding tube came out. And I said, wait, what? And we looked down and he, he showed me his um, belly button or his stoma. We call it his second belly button. But it, and, and I said, oh, and we looked around and there it was on the floor in the amusement park. <laughs> and so we picked it up and I had just seen a uh, first aid station right before that, luckily. And I'd noted it in my mind for some reason. And it was right close and so we picked it up, went around because we needed to get the right kind of syringe to um, get the water out and to be able to put it back in. We went in and we borrowed a syringe and got some cleaning supplies. We cleaned it and he likes to put it back in so we put the lubricant on it and he slid it back in, filled it back up and then we went on our merry way and continued at the amusement park for the rest of the day. It was a lot harder to put in. It was because it was almost time for it to be changed so the balloon, the material gets a little bit um, warm so it was a little harder to get in that time but we got it in right and then we got to go back and do some more rides we didn't need to do the ride we were waiting for no because it was a long line <laughs> yes <laughs> if the feeding tube comes out uh, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that the the button is clean and then take the water out if there's still water in it Uh, then we lubricate the uh, stem of the button. And then Isaiah likes to put it in himself, so he takes and pushes it in. And then we fill the button back up with the appropriate amount of water. and then we put the extension on. We pull the syringe back to check for stomach contents to make sure that it's in the right spot. We flush the extension. and then we unhook it and close the button and then we're done. At the beginning, I think the biggest obstacle was accepting that my child needed a feeding tube. I felt kind of like a failure that I couldn't feed her and do what I needed to do so that she could grow and stay hydrated appropriately. Um, after I got over that, it was just learning all the different terminology, learning what different types of syringe tips we needed and learning what an extension was and learning what 
terms all the doctors would be using like gravity feed or bolus feed or the pump and how to use a pump. There were a few things that I had to learn that I had never had to learn before with my other children. So that was, at the beginning of getting the tube, that was one of the harder things. It was pretty intimidating at first, but it was actually, we caught on pretty quickly. Um, there are a few steps that you have to kind of get used to. But it has become a new normal for us, and we actually are really thrilled to have it because it has alleviated a lot of our stress on making sure that he's gaining the weight that he needs. It makes it a lot easier for us to administer the medicine that we need to give, and so even if he gets dehydrated, it makes it really easy, easy for us to push uh, fluids in him when he's getting dehydrated. I can't remember when I didn't have the G-tube in. I remember it very well. <laughs> when he didn't have his feeding tube in, we were constantly fighting about eating. He was never eating enough. Um, he was never hungry. He didn't feel like eating. So it was just a constant battle to get him to eat. And since he's had the feeding tube, he's had it a little over five years now. It made a huge difference in just the peacefulness in our home, especially at mealtimes. He can eat what he wants, and um, we don't worry as much that he's not getting the nutrition that he needs. She would get dehydrated easily, so we'd always end up in the hospital getting an IV bag of fluids, and there were all these things that were happening. And once we got the feeding tube and we were yeah. able to get her the milk and water that she needed, I suddenly saw a child who had energy. I saw a child who could play and grow the way everybody else was. She has put on multiple pounds this year that she had lost before. And she, <laughs> and she was able to just talk and laugh and smile and I, feed herself and do the things that she hadn't had energy for before. She suddenly had energy because she was getting calories. She was getting nutrition that she so badly needed that we could not get to her without the feed.